So you, you will remember this um, canvas from the other video where I just simply did the background in yellow and burnt umber. Sorry, didn't turn the flash on. <clears throat> Had a unusual night at work last night. So slept a little late and had to take some meds to get to sleep. And not quite myself today. But I have discovered that I'm not necessarily really great at doing video tutorials. I feel like I have to get it done in a certain amount of time. Um, I don't, but I feel like I do, so I'm going to probably be changing my strategy here. Um, all I did on this canvas was trace out look familiar? The gourd. The gourd. <laughs> um, as my two main elements. So, I'm just blocking this one in with color. It is called, it's really, really old. I don't know if you can still get it. It's called Harvest Gold by Folk Art. Um, I, but this this is the end for the for the harvest gold. I won't ever be using it again because I don't have any more. I li literally that's all I've got. So really should have turned the flash on. Sorry. Uh, so I'm just blocking in the color. That's all. The blocking in the base color of my of the the crook neck gourd. I love gourds. As a matter of fact, I love doing gourd artwork. Um, I'm kind of a gourd snob. I don't like doing bird houses with them because I think you could do so many other interesting things uh, with gourds rather than just making a bird house. There's so many so many more possibilities. Okay, that's gourd one, and that's the harvest gold color. Now, what I'm going to do, because this other gourd is much lighter in color, <clears throat> I'm going to take some white. I can get it open. Ouch, I haven't had my painkillers today yet. So, uh, I'm going to take a little bit of white and mix it with the Harvest Gold to lighten up that color and make it a creamier kind of color. And I'm just blocking that in. See how it changed the color value? But I want to put the little, small, littler, the smaller gourd in front of the other gourd. And it's okay if it comes out, you know, streaky. That's, you know, they're, they're going to be 3D anyway. And this one gourd has knobbies on it. Knobbies. These, uh, I have no idea what they are. But they're interesting. Uh, but down here where the shadows are, certainly add some more of that color in and then go back into the white um, so now is a good time to pick my light source where's my light source coming from I think I want my light source 
sorry, just move the camera. I think I want my light source coming this way, which means this is going to be darker, which means I'm going to need a little black. Actually, I don't think I am going to use black. I think I will use burnt umber from Master's Touch because this is a... Uh, um, obviously a harvest painting and I want it to be more gold colored warmer color uh, because to me harvest is a really cool time of the year not cool as in cold cool as in awesome I love fall and I know you've heard me say I miss the East Coast Autumn. And that's all I'm doing right now is putting on the light source. With the three different values, color values, color, colors, whatever. Now, because uh, this is going to be a little bit, because it's coming this way, but this bottom will be in shadow, I want to put a little bit, and this is going to be even more in shadow over here, but it is also in front of the other gourd, so I may have overdone it a little. Was the other gourd because it's behind doesn't necessarily mean it's darker but I do want to make sure everyone can tell that the gourds are okay I'm just wiping my brush off because I got just a little too much there And it's kind of dramatically changing the color. There we go. Go back in with some of the Harvest Gold. And blend that out. There we go. That's looking more like what I want. So now I want to go put in the low lights or shadows in this gourd and they're going to be all along this back edge of the gourd I probably should move the camera to the other side So just going back in with a little Harvest Gold and smoothing that out, uh, blending it out. And then I want to go in with a little bit of white and put in my highlight color. A little white and Harvest Gold mixed together color. With a little bit extra white because this is where If my light source is coming from this way, it's also going to hit this. And it will even hit this area here. There we go. Oops. Okay, well, we'll figure out what to do about that later. Oh, you know, I can put in another element, so. Um, oops. I want to make this, I'm going to move this over here so you can actually see what I'm doing. Hold on. Get a nice view of my kitchen here. Let me move that to the... I guess I need to put that knob in a different place. OK, 
kid. I'm just wetting down my brush. Sorry, it's now on the other side of the... And I'm going back into some of the Harvest Gold and smoothing out some of that. And adding in, uh, smoothing out some of the shading and adding in some um, of my original gourd color. But I don't have enough highlight color on this side. <clears throat> and this is really close to the other gourd. I should have done this one first, but I didn't. Oh well. But you want to take the direction of your strokes in the shape of your gourd. It's the shape of the gourd that gives it its uh, definition. It tells you that it's a gourd, not a cube. <laughs> so I'll do a cube, I go up and down and across. You always want to take your I'm just trying at this point to smooth out I've taken some of the burnt umber <clears throat> And uh, as you all know by now, I have this thing about uh, uh, smoothness of my canvas, which is uh, I just I don't like the canvas showing through, which is why I sometimes I'll use canvas paper. Okay, so now I want to put sorry about my arm again. The knobs. I want to start with the knobs. And what I need is a smaller brush. Um, I don't know what these things are called, but they're part of the gourd. And um, I want to show them on here, otherwise it becomes a pair. But I want a smaller brush to do that with. So I think I'll use this one. Make sure it's lifted down. And now, let's see, if my light source is coming from this way, all of the dark shadow parts of these are going to be on the bottom and on the side. So I know my light source in the painting is different than the light source in the room, but that's okay. So I want to go ahead and put in... Um, I know you can't really see that, so let me so I'm putting in the harvest gold color with the highlight and all I'm doing is dotting it on and making some of them bigger come along the top put in the highlight color I'm just globbing the paint on making sure I get the highlight color across the top which Double loading a round brush is probably not as easy as it looks. That didn't make it, did it? So it's all almost like a half circle. If you need to study and some of them are close together, some of them are in a line, just make sure you get that highlight color in there. You can even put some out to the side because some of them are going to be raised a nice glob of paint there. 
off of the surface. I don't know if this if this uh, uh, knobby stuff on the on the gourd is um, a fungus or just the way the gourd grows. I'm not sure. But um, I certainly it certainly lends interest to the painting. Try to get you as close as possible because on my camera phone it won't zoom while you're actually recording and I am not that YouTube savvy <clears throat> to know how to do that quite yet uh, with their video creator I'll get there just not not today Now down here in the shadow, there isn't quite so much white, so I'm going to add, <clears throat> excuse me, add in more of the gold color. I'm going to put a few more right here. Because this little thing, as you can see, it's sort of like covered with them. But I don't want to do too many. Okay. Now I'm just going to wipe off my brush. I'm going to come back in with a little teeny bit of um, burnt umber. And I'm going to go around the bottom edge. Okay, oops, sorry, I didn't mean to breathe. Because it's the shadow of the little bumps. And it gives some definition. And I want to make sure, want to make sure, I'm sorry, wanna is not a word, sorry. To go in between where I have them in a line like that. <clears throat> and I'm just wiping off my brush and reloading. They're irregular in shape because they're irregular in shape on the gourd. Sorry about the shaking. It is um, of the camera. It is literally right next to my leg. And if I breathe too hard, <laughs> I move the camera. 
Okay, so these over here on this side don't really have enough highlight. So I'm just going to come along and highlight the tops. Okay, a couple more. It's the highlight that raises it up off of the gourd so that you can see that it has height. It is also the shadows that raises it up off the gourds because it gives it depth. Uh, here it is, as you can see. It has this little flat-ish top to it. Um, all right, highlight across the top. Wipe the brush off. <clears throat> Low lights or shadows along the bottom. All right, how does that look? I could fix this one just a little bit. What do we think? Do we like it so far? Well, frankly, I like it better than the field of gourds because I need to practice my trees. Um, I've been painting for a long, long time, but it's been more uh, abstract kind of work. Uh, I've just only recently gotten into this kind of painting. And so trees and clouds are so far eluding me. Which, all that means is I just simply need to practice. And that's why I'm taking you guys on this journey, because if it's something I need to learn, it's probably something everybody needs to learn. And I was talking with my volunteer coordinator about, you know, some of the, oh, I missed a highlight about some of the classes that I'm teaching with the artwork. And I said, I just can't get those Bob Ross style clouds down. She goes, and why would you want to do Bob Ross clouds? Why not just do Edith Mary clouds? And I'm like, oh, well, if you put it that way. So yeah, uh, copying is great. Copying is how we learn. But along the line, you need somewhere along the line, you need to start developing your own style and do your own style of clouds and trees. And I think that's to the point where I am. Sorry about the shaking. Is I need to develop because I'm switching from abstracts to. Well, now, doesn't that look strange? Because I'm switching from uh, abstracts to more um, uh, still life and, and landscapes and stuff like that. I, uh, it's a process. It's a process. Let me get the white out. Here we go. A little more white. Make that highlight. And I'm spending a lot of time on this detail because it's a lot of detail. And uh, you certainly don't have to put these in your gourds. You can make just a regular old RNG gourd. 
A pumpkin is a gourd too, so I mean you can do a pumpkin. It doesn't matter what you put in your still life. This is what I had on hand. Now, for the detail in the other gourd. Bye bye, paint. Knocked it on the floor. Um, it has a few knobs. And some um, uh, mold. Oops, sorry you didn't see that. That's mold, mold growing on it because it's so old. But it's by and large, it's smooth. It just has a few. Oh, how about that? It's kind of, sorry. It's got a little crack in it, which means it's it's been tossed around a few times. So what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do, because gonna is also not a word. I'm trying to go back to using English. <laughs> yes, Harvey, I know. My little boy is asking for attention. So I'm just going to set that right there for reference. Hold on, let me stop that. Uh, what am I going to do? I think I just want to come in sorry that's now on the wrong side whoop okay well maybe you can see that a little better now with a wet bra wet brush and a little bit of whatever the colors I've put in here and add in some ribbing. That's all I've done. Excuse me. And of course the the ribbing on, you know, however it is you need to steady your hand. I just need to make sure mine is steadied on the Oops, that was a little wide. This is the shadow portion of the ribbing. Now I want to go back in with a little bit of white. And I want to obliterate this shadow, but I want to set it back a little bit more. Okay. Now. <laughs> I would like it's kind of like boring all by itself. Doesn't really say anything except, oh look, I can paint two gourds. So what I would like to do is take some of the Yes, Clarence, I am fully aware you're there. Um, no, I can't pick you up right now. Sorry, Clarence is being... I want to put in an acorn. And an acorn is... No, that's not that's not gonna work either, Clarence. Largely I know. Dark brown and it's sort of cup shaped. Now across the top I'm just using a lighter color. It's um, when you do the cap, the acorn cap, it's bigger that 
Clarence. <sighs> wow, when your cat decides they absolutely have to have attention. So I'm just using the same colors, the burnt umber. <laughs> using the burnt umber and the Ow, Clarence, you're making Ow! Sorry, he decided to get on the back of the chair and climb my shirt. Uh, I'm just using this that same warmish color palette. Um want to come in with some plain pure color to make the shadow under the cap. Because I think we can all see as you can see Clarence has decided to take a different tack. And I'm hoping you guys can really see this, this acorn. Okay, my camera shut off again while I was working on the acorn. Um, as you can see down here, it's just not enough definition for me. So I am going to take this black, just a dot, and I am going to come in that gives a lot more definition to the acorn. Uh, as a matter of fact, I can even mix the black with a little bit of the burnt umber. And the little acorn hat's a little fat, but eh, it's okay. But I will take some pure burnt umber. There we go. And while we're at it, I guess I'll put in another one right here. So I make the underneath side of the cap and just come down in that kind of triangly. Top shape. That acorns are known for. Come back in with black and put along the edge. So I want to mix just a little bit of burnt umber with the pumpkin, that harvest gold color. Um, if I can make that shadow just a little bit darker. I want to put the highlight here. The highlight's not going to be so bright because... There we go. And I can do that along the top over here. And I can come in here and give this like a little highlight.
add just a little bit of black to make the shadow color over here. Maybe a little bit more black. Because when you're looking at black and brown, it's not always so apparent. There we go. Okay, so we have two gourds, two acorns. Sorry, just refining that a little. And I think I want to put like a little highlight right there too. Um, what else do we want to do to this? What else do we want to put in here? like a sunflower in but I do sunflowers in just about everything so I want to avoid a sunflower right now um, oh you know what I could put <clears throat> let me move this back just a little so you can see more of what I'm talking about In this area over here, we could put like a droopy flower in some other color than this. Still warm, but not so muted and, and um, so I think I'll do that. Excuse my arm. <clears throat> Now, for the color of the flower, because this is the bigger, it's going to be the main focus, but the flower should be like a little bit of a e color. So why don't I go to my old standby. Red Oxide from Liquitex Basics, which is a really cool color. Um, it's like burnt sienna with a little red in it. So all I'm doing is putting out a wee little amount. Let me show you on the palette. A wee little amount of that color. And the flash is still not coming on. Um, it's probably about the size of a dime. And that's about all we're going to need. So I'm going to make sure my brush is nice and wet, and since that's a nice thick paint, I'm not going to remove the excess. Um, there we go. There's the first petal. I know with my arm in the way, you can't really see. All I'm doing is laying the brush down and dragging it out. Some people go this way. I like to go, oops, excuse me, I probably just moved. What I'm going to do is move that up a little bit and maybe move it in so that you can see what I'm doing and it's not in my way. So I want to make it just a little bit more liquid than this, than it has been. I'm not wearing my, my reading glasses today. Oh. 
Okay, so I'm just coming in. You know what? I'm going to move the... Oops. Sorry, that was a cat I just kicked. I'm going to move this the other way so you can see what I'm doing. Hopefully. And if your paint is liquid enough, it'll leave a nice sharp point. Now I want to, that's the base. I want to come in with some white. Sorry, make it very liquidy. And do the exact same thing. Okay. I think it might be a good idea to put another one coming like here. Let me wipe that off and start with Ah! Oof! Okay, just add, just mixing a little bit more white, getting some highlights, and I think I like that. Now we need stems. <laughs> Sorry, I keep knocking the canvas. All I'm doing is dipping into some water with, and taking some green that's already getting yucky in the. And I don't want so much. I only want a small little line. Might want a leaf. Might want this thing that comes out that way. And another piece of a leaf. Now, of course, I want to come along. I'm just wiping my brush off. I'm not rinsing it or anything. With some white. Along. To help let everybody know that's a leaf shape. And since I went over that, I want to come back in. Sorry, getting some more water. Just making that um, red oxide color a little more liquid. <clears throat> so I want to come in and set 
behind that. Behind. Now coming back one a little more like because I. go. Uh, and just for effect, I want to put a little, like they're falling off, some fallen petals. So there's no real table here. I mean, you can see there was a dark area, but there's no. But it's all taken up by the the closeness of these gourds here. All right, ah, let me back out a little bit. Move this thing down again. And the reason I have this thing in front is because I keep hitting it. <laughs> there's no. Uh, uh, there is just. I could turn the camera around, but I just keep hitting it. And I knocked it over a couple times, and I'm like, well, you know what? We just need to do something different. Okay. So, what else do you... Let me move these. What else do you think this um, painting needs? Let's look at it this way. Which is how I see it. Oops. There we go. What do we think? I personally like it. There are those who would say I need some a pop of color on this side. Um I don't. Per yeah, I could use that. I mean, I could, but it's basically a finished painting as it is. So, um, if you want to learn what else I do to this thing, because obviously it's not finished, finished. Because I can't. I'm just. I'm trying to manage my time a little bit better. Uh, come to class. Learn how to do it. Um, where we have more time and more fun than just me on camera. If I really wanted to, I could actually put another, and that actually I think would be a good idea, to put another uh, acorn in there. Because all I've got are two, two, and two, and I need something to offset that. So I will come back in and put another acorn there. And um, I don't know. I'm going to be doing more to this painting off canvas, so, and then you'll see the picture later, so come to class. Please like, subscribe, and share if this has been of value to you. If you want to take this class, give me a call. Contact me on Facebook or private message me or, you know, in the comment section, please, uh, tell me, you know, uh, or private message me or whatever, And because uh, I'm not that hard to get a hold of. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.